Hello friends. Today in our spotter series, we will be discussing an interesting neurological case which is many times asked to radiology residents as a spotter. Let us see if you can make the diagnosis on this images provided to you. To help your cause, this is a child with history of epilepsy and MRI brain T2 weighted images provided and T1 post gadolinium images provided to you. Now, can you see the findings and run to the and make a diagnosis on these? This is this is a typical image which is very often given to the residents as a spotter. Now, most important thing that I want you to appreciate here is please compare the two cortex. What do you appreciate? Atrophy. Atrophy of one side of the brain would be called as hemiatrophy. Okay. What else do we appreciate? We appreciate there is leptomeningeal enhancement in the posterior part of the brain in the T1 post contrast images. Any diagnosis? Now, once we look at these images and the findings, immediately the diagnosis that comes to our mind is called as Sturge Weber syndrome. Sturge Weber syndrome is a type of neurocutaneous syndrome in which it is also called as encephalotrigeminal angiomatosis. It is also called as encephalotrigeminal angiomatosis. In this, a patient would have a leptomeningeal pile angioma, ocular choroidal angiomas, and a port wine stain type of angioma in the distribution of the trigeminal nerve or on the face. Now, there are many uh, you know, uh, etiologies which have been described for this disease. The most popular etiology that uh, the hypothesis that people believe is that this is because of persistence of the embryonic vessels. Now, embryologically, we have vessels in the embryonic, embryonic vessel, vascular plexus is present around the cranial end of the neural tube, which is supposed to, uh, which, which is supposed to regress by the nine weeks of gestational age. If it persists beyond that, and if it persists, the persistence of that embryonic plexus is called as Sturge Weber syndrome. Now, because of that vascular plexus, uh, it leads to uh, venous congestion in the brain and uh, an element of vascular steel in the brain which leads to resultant hemiatrophy of the brain and gliosis resulting hemiatrophy and this is seen as enhancement of the leptomeningeal enhancement on the MRI brain. This leptomeningeal enhancement on MRI brain is considered very specific for Sturge Weber syndrome and later in life many of these angiomas will show calcification which would look like this on a CT scan and this is called as the tram track calcification. So what is what is the reason for the tram track calcification? It is calcification of the leptomeningeal angiomas which happens. This is one of the most important spotters that is asked to radiology residents and uh, in our series of spotters now to conclude the diagnosis is Sturge Weber syndrome. Please remember the name encephalotrigeminal angiomatosis. It would help you in remembering the findings. Thank you.